Eat, eat electric death. All right, let's do it. Welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Thousand One Games. I'm your host, Gaming J, and today we're playing Tempest 2000, which was first released on the Atari Jaguar. <laughs> So suitable because it was released on the Jaguar, you are a claw-like spacecraft shooting rude dudes to cool tunes in space. In fact, I think you even fight Satan himself on the box cover from Nama. Can we bring that in real quick? Here's the box cover of Tempest 2000, and you're attacking Space Satan. So that's totally awesome. So without further ado, let's go ahead and hop into Tempest 2000 here. It is, of course, well past the year 2000. So, uh, Beast Yak is number one. Okay, how do I start? What, which, which button initiates the gameplay mechanic of this particular game? We're just staring at a blank, blank screen waiting. Start. Initiate. Go. Okay, here we go. Excellent. <laughs> what? Excellent. Excellent. <laughs> Every time you change the, the gameplay, it says excellent. Okay, we totally want to play Tempest 2000. Display setup, control setup. Like, let's just go for it, man. All right, here we are in Tempest 2000. Looks a lot like the original Tempest that we played way back in the day on the uh, arcades. Um, Tempest 2000, interestingly, is kind of a remake of the original arcade Tempest, but it also ups the ante. There's apparently more power-ups, bonus levels, there's better baddies. Um, so we're going to get to see all of that in sweet polygonal wireframe action. Eat, uh, eat electric death. All right, so here we are. We are the claw machine. And we're just shooting at uh, the random baddies as they try and crawl through this tube and get us, and we're not going to let that happen, guys. Um, and this is it. This is just like the arcade. Oh, and a claw caught us. Okay, I'm, I'm still sort of adjusting to the controls here. Um, oh, I can just hold the arrow key and that okay. I was pressing the arrow key every time I wanted to go, but I should just be holding it. Gotcha. So this is the fast-paced game of uh, shooting stuff. Shooting stuff. Actually, okay, this is kind of interesting. Wikipedia lists this game as a tube shooter. You know how there's, there's, uh, you know, there's like, uh, uh, what am I, shoot 'em ups there's running guns, there's shooters generally. Well, this is a very specific subgenre of shooting game called a tube shooter, which I think is like very, that's like very esoteric, right? Like what, what, what more? Oh, is this a power up? Yeah, particle laser. All right, do it. I think I used it. I particled up some, oh no, look, I'm firing particles now. All right, there you go. Um, but I think that's like a very esoteric, uh, like subfield of like the shoot 'em up genre, a tube shooter. It's like a shooter that occurs just in a tube. Um, and that kind of made me like chuckle when I saw that. Actually, it kind of got me thinking like, um, jump enabled. You can jump in this game? Oh my God, I can jump. Look at this. Cool. All right, so that's something that's new. Uh, but anyway, it kind of got me thinking like, what are some other like really, really weird, random, like subgenres of video games that you could possibly come up with? Super Zapper. Re recharge. All right, done. Um, by the way, you might notice some graphical glitches and stuff as I'm playing this. I apologize for that. Um, I'm playing this, obviously, on an Atari Jaguar uh, emulator here. And, uh, you know, uh, Atari Jaguars are really hard to come by. And I I'll make no, uh, you know, no secret about the fact that I actually don't have one. Uh, but I felt like this game, you know, it's so rare so rare for us to like be recommended a game from the Atari Jaguar from the Thousand and One book that I had to go out of my way to like try and figure out a way to kind of make it happen. So uh, that, that's what we're doing here today. Uh, playing our tube shooter, which again is an awesome, is an awesomely specific subgenre of shooter. Man, there's got to be other awesome subgenres that we can come up with. Um, but yeah, it's the Atari Jaguar. <laughs> Interesting system. Interesting system. I mean, it's essentially a failed console, right? Like we can say that now, like. There, and, and by the way, if you're a fan of the Atari Jaguar, when I say it's a failed console, I don't mean like, oh man, it's garbage. I mean like, like it just failed. Like it, 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 it wasn't successful, you know? Like, and there's, that's just a factual truth of the, the whole Atari Jaguar experiment. Just, uh, you know, they tried. They tried, man. They tried, but it just, it didn't, 
It didn't have the market shares that it needed. Didn't have the games, and uh, just it just didn't just didn't work. You know, they they wanted to make it work. Oh lord, did they want to make it work? But it did not. It did not work. You know what's something interesting though that I found? Kind of interesting. So this game came out primarily on the Atari Jaguar, and then later on it came out uh, on things like Mac and, and PC and DOS and PlayStation. It also came out on the Sega Saturn. Which is another sort of, um, I mean, I guess you could also consider like a relatively failed system. Like they tried, it just, it didn't really, you know, uh... Yes! 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 <laughs> what the heck? Yes! Yes, 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 yes! Okay. I mean, they tried to take like a sad, it's just it never really got the market share it needed. And so like it kind of, you know, they, they kind of retired it relatively early. And it's like other systems, like the Virtual Boy and stuff, which were failed systems. But one thing I've noticed that's kind of interesting about uh, the Sega, or about uh, Jaguar and 3DO, which is yet another uh, failed system, the, the Philips 3DO and CDI. The 3DO, CDI, Jaguar, um, all the games that came out on those systems also appear to have been released on the Sega Saturn, or most of them have. That's just something I've sort of like casually noticed. Every time I've played a CDI game, it's like this game was on the CDI and the Sega Saturn. Every time I play like a popular Jaguar game, it's like this was on the Jaguar and the Sega Saturn. Uh, same with the Philips uh, 3DO and CDI. What is happening with the yes yeses? Um, so it's almost like... <laughs> It's almost like there was like a club of like misfit consoles. You guys remember that old Rudolph the Reindeer movie where it's like there was the island of misfit toys? I kind of feel like there's there's the island of misfit consoles and it's like when a game failed on one of these misfit consoles, it did it also went to something popular like the PlayStation, but it, they also like tried to give it a shot on another of these misfit consoles. You know, it's like it, they were in like some kind of like little like like an old school boys club where it's like, oh, you're releasing on the Saturn. Well, why don't you also release on the 3DO, you know, or the CDI? Um, so I don't know. I don't know if I'm imagining that correlation. You know, it, again, it's not something I've looked into and specifically tried to like see if it's accurate or not. But it's something I've sort of casually uh, avoid the spikes casually noticed as I have been playing these like uh, old school games. By the way, I really hope that uh, Space Satan isn't just on the box art. I really hope Space Satan is an actual bad guy we get to fight in this game, because uh, I'm I'm really I'm I'm just really hoping to see some Space Satan today. It would, it would make my day. What are these things? I don't seem to be able to shoot them. They just blow up on top of me. Okay. Oh, they caught me. So the only bad guys we've we've really encountered so far are like the grabby crabs, we'll call them. They like show up and they grab you and they pull you away, which is totally uncool. But uh, we'll call them the grabby crabs. Uh, particle lasers. Yeah, let's try some of these other buttons. Oh, electric death. Interesting. So there's only three buttons. Well, actually, I, I take it back. There's there's like a billion buttons on the Atari Jaguar controller. The Atari Jaguar controller is basically like a Sega Genesis controller mated with uh, an Atari 5200 controller. I think it was a 5200 controller that had like the numbered dial pad, like the numbers one through nine on the controller. That's what the Jaguar has, but then it's also basically a Sega Genesis controller slapped on top. So it has like the D-pad and three buttons. And that basically, if you hold a 5200 controller and a, a Genesis controller, you have got yourself a Jaguar controller. They just mashed them together in the lab is how they uh, went ahead and created them. So there you go. Um, but it's a, it's a very interesting controller. You know what, I've, I've actually kind of wanted to get the controller. Uh, I don't have an Atari Jaguar, but I kind of just want to own one of those controllers because uh, I just think it's like so fascinating and unique. I don't know, I'm a bit of like a controller nut. I love collecting like weird old ways of controlling games. Um, and, and actually, speaking of which, one of the complaints about this game is that it only used the controller. Shoot you. Is that what it just said there? It's kind of weird. Um, because the original Tempest in the arcades actually used, like, a rotary, like, wheel controller. And fans of that game, like, really liked the fact that that's how it was controlled. And so one of the complaints of this game is that it did not use a rotary controller. But actually jokes on the critics because funny funnily enough uh oh do a jump or something there we go electric death we used to power up move somehow uh, funnily enough this game was actually programmed it was actually programmed to use a rotary wheel controller it's just that the atari jaguar went out of business before they could ever release it uh, which is you know i mean again failed console this is how it is 
Uh, it kind of reminds me of how, like, the Virtual Boy had, like, a link cable, the same way the Game Boy had a link cable, so that the idea is you could link up a couple Virtual Boys and play with your friends. Uh, but the they retired the console before they ever released the link cable, so it's just, like, a dead peripheral sp uh, spot. Actually... A little bit of trivia about the NES. The NES, actually, if you if you have an old school NES, pick it up, look underneath it. There's like a little square compartment that kind of comes off, and there's like a little area um, that was actually originally meant for like kind of an NES expansion uh, for peripherals that were like never developed. Like it was a little expansion port for the NES, and they kind of like never did anything with it. So even successful consoles can have uh, peripherals that never see the light of day. But yes, they did intend to make a rotary wheel controller for this game. They just never got around to it. They were they were too busy trying to not have the console fail. Um, and uh, and actually, uh, since since this game has you know kind of you know been released on emulators and stuff, the homebrew community has actually gone ahead and hacked different ways to play this game with a rotary controller. And one of the controllers that's compatible with this game now is the Atari 2600, uh, like, wheel controller, which is actually hilarious. Because, like, you know, you're playing, like, what's supposed to be, like, a next-gen console uh, game, and you're using one of the oldest controllers in existence, the Atari 2600, uh, you know, controller. And and I just think that's, that's actually pretty cool that that works. And, and actually, I think the developer of this game, when he was developing the rotary controls, he actually himself used a hacked... 2600 rotary controller so you know kind of the homebrew community is actually doing it the way it was designed to be played so there you go um but yeah in interesting little bit of trivia here for for tempest 2000 you know all the all these little things that, that happen behind the scenes when games are developed and like you'd never know about it unless you went and like read up on it like you you know maybe you're watching this video because you're a tempest 2000 fan but maybe the stuff I'm telling you, like, you've never heard of. You're like, why? You can play this with a rotary controller? Like, you just never would have known, you know? Like, uh, it's, it's kind of... I find all that, like, history and backstory to video games, like, just so fascinating. Um, I think that's why I like watching documentaries about the development of video games. But anyway, so what's the story behind uh, Tempest here? Shot you. Like, you're just some, like, claw that's, like, randomly grabbing on to, like, polygonal surfaces in space and then ridding it of like random bugs and stuff that are connected. Like it's a very, very weird kind of like premise for a game. Um, I wonder what it sounded like when it was first described. You know, when uh, when the, devel the, the developer of this game first went to Atari and he was like, okay, I got this idea for a game. You are a space claw and you kind of like move around on this surface and you kind of just shoot at things and there's like, I guess the first one didn't even have power-ups. They're like, and he's like, it's all vector graphics. It's all vector-based. You know, vector-based graphics, and you're kind of like shooting at these other claws, the bad claws, I call them, and you're a good claw. And then when you win, you kind of like fly through space, and you land on like another surface. Uh, I call it a tube shooter, in fact. It's a new subgenre of shooters. It's going to be big guys, trust me. And so you're mostly in tubes or flat surfaces shooting, shooting claws. And I'm sure the Atari executives just, like, looked at him like, what's this guy smoking? Um, but, of course, actually, they probably also were like, approve it! Because uh, Atari pretty much just made anything back in the day. Atari was, like, a really good example of, like, quantity over quality. Like, if you look at the Atari 2600, it's just, like, a mess of games. Uh, and there's just, like, there, there are some, some classics, but I think there's also some of, like, worst games ever made out of it. Like, things that, like, barely count as games. Like, they're just, oh, caught me! They're just so, like, you know, ridiculously bad. So it's kind of interesting that the Atari 2600, they were just like, we'll just make whatever and people will buy everything. All right, here's my new strategy. It's called just, like, move like a madman. And I got the laser power-up. Electric death! Oh, I missed that power-up. This this is this, this will be interesting if this strategy works because I'm I'm not uh, I'm not like intentionally trying to move in any in any capacity. I'm just holding the button and holding to the right. We'll see if this works. This it, it, it's surprising that it is actually working. Oh, we can even jump now. Look at this. They'll never get us. Look at this. Try and catch me now. Catch me now. I look like I'm I'm like a little claw ship having a seizure. Oh, but he did catch me. 
Okay, we should actually try, guys. We shouldn't just mess around. Um, Tempest was never a game, by the way, that like I, I really played all that much. Um, I will do this strategy for a bit, because it's like actually semi-useful. Oh my god. There's a claw thing over here, though. Ah, oh, damn it, it caught us. Sometimes you can walk into those claws and shoot them, but I don't know when it's safe to do that. But anyway, Tempest was never, like, my game. I was never, like, you know, really into the Tempest series. They're really good at it. So, um, I kind of I kind of don't have any, uh, any idea about how far we'll actually get in this game today. I mean, we very easily could be right at the end. Because, let's be honest, I have no extra lives. And, uh, if you're putting faith in my abilities to get us out of this little jam, then you have not been paying attention. Because I am Gaming J. I play games... For fun. That is my life, oh god! <laughs> I don't play them to be good. Game over. Oh god, it's like it's like barfing game over at us. It's pulsating, it's throwing it into our brains. It's like, here's a game over for you. Game over forever. Alright, so now we have to go ahead and enter our name. Uh, J. Don't you guys love watching me enter my name like the billionth time you've seen me do it? J. Now we're part of the ages, guys, and an Atari Jaguar. <coughs> Boom. The top guns. <laughs> number one is Beast, also known as Yak. For Yak deck. Oh, we got the number five. That's actually pretty good. Wait, I'm calling shenanigans. How the hell did Beast get 50,000 or 500,000 points on level one? Yeah, right. Yeah, right. All right, we're going to hop in here again. Tempest Duel. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Goes just goes excellent, excellent, excellent. Actually, let's go ahead. Let's see what Tempest Plus is. One player AI droid. Want to want to go ahead and see this real quick. And we'll actually take a quick look at Tempest Traditional. I think that's just going to be the original Tempest. Um, all right. So here we go. Launching our way in to the first tube, and it's. Pretty much the exact same as what we were just playing. It's just more wireframey. So I guess this is more like the traditional Tempest. I guess we'll see if there's power-ups. We'll we'll commit suicide shortly because we don't want to go through the whole the whole shebang again. But uh, yeah, it seems to be pretty much just the, the same. I want actually I think Tempest Plus. So my guess is it's the original Tempest. It's just amped up a little bit. So we're probably not going to see power-ups here. That's, uh, that's my guess here. So yeah. So it plays a bit smoother than the non-textured Tempest 2000, but uh, there you go. So I guess there is a Tempest 3000 and a Tempest 4000, so if you are a Tempest fan, there's lots of Tempest out there for you. What are other tube shooters, by the way? So the genre... Oh, shot me. The genre of this game is tube shooter. What are other tube shooters? Uh, and again, going back, I, I asked this at the beginning of the video, but what are other, like random, weird um, sub-genres of games that either exist or that we can make up together, you know? Like, what are some... Oh, let's pause. What are some, uh, like, funny sub-genres that you could possibly think of? Uh, I can't think of any off the top of my head. I'm not even going to try. I'll just say something, like, incredibly stupid. But, uh, but Tube Shooter. I don't, I don't know. I still like it. I still like it. It's kind of funny. Um, okay, we have to die one more time, and then we'll check out Traditional Tempest. Which I'm pretty sure is literally just Tempest. Oh, they got me! Uh, uh, uh. The game over screen is still super intense. They want you to know that it's game over for realsies. This ain't no stinking joke. Alright, we're gonna go on to traditional. Tempest Duel, I guess, is two players, which is kind of cool. If you happen to own two controllers and an Atari Jaguar, um, you can... You can uh, oh, look at this. Let's go ahead and start on a different level. Like this one. The flat plane. Pretty sure this is just traditional Tempest now. Although I don't understand how this differs from Tempest Plus. Oh! Wow, this looks even more old school. Yeah, this, this is totally... So they give you the original Tempest with Tempest 2000. That's not bad. That's not bad. Eh. Well, um, I think we've got our, we've got a good sense of Tempest. I mean, you know, we've, we've played it, we've seen what it has to offer. Oh god, they got me. Yeah, it's, this is all vector graphics. This is all, like, connected lines. This is totally the original Tempest. So, uh, Tempest 2000 here is one of the games of the book. A thousand one video games you must play before you die. And, um, so I, 
I don't know, I, I think this game would appeal to Tempest fans, but the book already included the original Tempest. And like, to be totally honest, as someone who was like not a Tempest fanatic, playing Tempest 2000, it felt kind of upgraded compared to the original Tempest, but like, didn't feel all that different. So I don't know, like, the power-ups were kind of nice, but as somebody who like wasn't obsessed with Tempest to begin with, it sort of like thought, yeah, felt like, yeah, it was, it was just Tempest. So I don't know, like um, if you're going to include Tempest, you know, does Tempest 2000 still have a place? Uh, I personally would probably think like, well, did I get that one up or miss it? I personally would probably think maybe not because like after playing Tempest or Tempest 2000, I personally would have had my fill of this kind of game. So I wouldn't have included both, but I'm curious to know what you guys think if both should be in the game. Um, I think one thing that is kind of cool about them including Tempest 2000, though, is the fact that it means they included an Atari Jaguar game. And actually, it's interesting, if you go look at this entry in the book, it says that Tempest 2000 was released for various systems, which is true. And then the whole review just talks about Tempest 2000, and then at the very end, the last sentence is like, you know, something, they say something really nice about the Atari Jaguar, like, you know, maybe this is an excuse for you to own an Atari Jaguar. And it's sort of like... Wait, so is this game on the Atari Jaguar? Like, like they never explicitly say this game is on the Atari Jaguar. It doesn't say anywhere that it is until the last sentence. It's like, and that's why you own an Atari Jaguar. <coughs> and so, yeah, it's, uh, it's, uh, you know, it's on the Atari Jaguar. That's kind of cool. Atari Jaguar is an interesting system. Um, and I love playing, like, I love trying out different systems, even if I don't physically own it, you know. And we have to resort to being dirty, dirty emulator dudes. But uh, anyway. Um, yeah, so what do you guys think of Tempest 2000 here? What are your thoughts? What are your opinions? What are your memories, tips, tricks, all that stuff? Feel free to chime off in the comments down below. Um, and whatever you think of Tempest 2000 here, hopefully I have made today entertaining. If I have, don't forget to slap the like button, subscribe to the channel, share my video with all your friends and family, and you know all the other good stuff. Check me out on Patreon these days, all the fun stuff. Um, it helps me so much when you guys sort of get involved. And even just commenting, even just liking a video, I consider that being involved. So, uh, you know, please, please join the conversation, guys. Um, and that's it for me. So until next time, I'm just going to be lost in space looking for Space Satan to give him a, a mouthful of marbles, I guess. And uh, you guys should all take care of yourselves. So uh, we'll see you soon, guys. Peace. Oh, God. Oh, I, I got out of that somehow. Oh, I got out of that. How is this working? Uh, now we're dead. All right, guys, peace. Excellent, 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 excellent